Hello, students, and welcome to another English class live stream. I am Jay, and I am glad to be with you today. I have the opportunity to help you to understand and speak better English on today's lesson. Oh, I'm so excited. We are going to learn about snacks. That's right. I'm going to teach you numerous, numerous things about snacks. Now, I'm not just going to talk about what type of snacks like uh, potato chips and candy. No, we're going to have a good time and learn a number of things about snacks that you can use to communicate when you speak in English. So let's get ready. Now, before we get into today's lesson, I have a lot of new things that I have added to the class. I'm excited about during today's teaching. I'm going to do a subscriber shout out. So make sure you watch until the end. I'm going to have quizzes or quiz questions throughout today's lesson. And so if you're paying attention, as always, uh, make sure that you are listening so you can answer those questions. And I have a new section, Ask Me Anything. We're going to try that out for the next few class sessions where I have some questions that have been put before me and I'm going to ask them and give you the opportunity to ask me anything to get to know your teacher. So let's get into it. Let's have some fun on today. So when we talk about snacks, snacks are just simply small amounts of food generally eaten between meals. Okay. So you may get up and you have breakfast at seven o'clock in the morning, but you may not have lunch until 1130 or 12 o'clock. And so you grab a snack or two in between. The same goes for between lunch and dinner or dinner and before you go to bed and wake up the next morning for breakfast. Now, most young people, they have snacks all the time. <laughs> Because they're young, they have a high metabolism, and they are growing. But the older you get, your snacks begin to change, as well as how frequently uh, you eat snacks, at least in my experience. So let's get into today's lesson. The first common English vocabulary word as it pertains to snacks that you need to know are or is the munchies, <laughs> the munchies. The munchies describes a person who has a strong desire for snacks. I mean, they're always nibbling. They're always in the pantry looking for something, in the closet looking for food. Um, they, they, they have the munchies all the time when they go to the grocery store. They buy snack food more so than uh, healthy food or nourishing food. Uh, some people have said, not from my experience, that when you do certain type drugs, <laughs> you get the munchies. I've heard cannabis or marijuana, people that smoke, it gives them the munchies. They, they want to snack all the time. And it's usually made fun of in different types of movies and comedians talk about using drugs and uh, having the munchies. You don't have to be on drugs to <laughs> have the munchies, okay? So again, that describes a person that has a strong desire for snacks. A vending machine. A vending machine is a machine that holds snacks, okay? Potato chips, uh, candy. Uh, sometimes it may have some healthy snacks in there, sunflower chips, <laughs> and they may charge you anywhere from 50 cents to $2 per snack. And so you would put your money in the machine. You would press the corresponding alphabet and number, and it will drop your snack down in the bottom. And if you have change, it will give you change. Uh, vending machines. They make a lot of money. <laughs> they make a lot of money. Okay. A soda machine. Some people call uh, soda pop. 
I don't know what they may call it in your country, but here in the United States is usually usually soda or or pop. And so uh, it's like a vending machine and. You put your change or your money in it. Now they have them where you can use your debit card and it will give you a a drink, a carbonated drink like Coca-Cola, Sprite, uh, Fanta, an orange drink or something. Let me turn this light off back here. Hold on, guys. Now, usually you will see a vending machine and a soda machine right beside one another because they know if you're using the vending machine, it's going to be salty food. And so you're going to want to have something to drink behind it. Now, the candy lady, the candy lady. I grew up in a neighborhood and I have been to several neighborhoods where there is a candy lady. Usually the candy lady is a woman in a neighborhood or an apartment complex that is known by all of the children <laughs> and the teenagers in that area for selling candy. OK, and so you would go over to her house, you would go over to her apartment and it would be a way for her to make extra money and she would have nothing healthy. <laughs> <laughs> it would be all snack food. And so during the summertime when kids were out playing, I mean, this is before you had PlayStation and Xbox, when you would see kids outside all the time, we would be riding our bikes and everybody knew where the candy lady was. And so you would get a dollar, you would get two dollars and you would go see the candy lady and you would buy your snacks there. And usually parents would allow kids to go to the candy lady's house or apartment because it was safer than them crossing the street or going a few blocks away from home to buy snacks at a gas station. And so the candy lady, she was an essential part <laughs> to the neighborhood. OK, so the candy lady. Matter of fact, let me back up and say this. I was so impacted when I wanted to make extra money as I grew up, I began to sell candy at school. That's how we made money. We would go to uh, the farmer's market and we would buy wholesale candy and then take it to school and sell it. I mean, I was selling all types of candies, uh, but the older I got, the competition got strong. People started selling pickles, <laughs> uh, uh, Cokes and Sprite. And I was like, man, Y'all, y'all are doing too much. But the candy lady uh, was a part of the neighborhood and she inspired people like me to start selling candy at school. The ice cream truck. OK, the ice cream truck is basically a snack truck or a vending machine on wheels, because during the summertime, when it's very hot, you would have the ice cream man come through the neighborhood. It didn't matter if it was a. Uh, middle class neighborhood, a wealthy neighborhood, or it was in the projects. We were all happy to see the ice cream man. OK, and so he would have snacks that were usually frozen or or refrigerated. Uh, sometimes you have different ice cream trucks that may have shaved ice and they would put flavoring on it and it would be like a, a homemade snow cone or what they call Italian ice. I believe up in like New York, New Jersey, up in that area, they, they are known for having the, uh, the snow cone man. He would have a large block of ice and he would just shave it off, shave the ice off, put it in a little cone and put the flavoring on it. Strawberry, pineapple, pina colada, coconut. And he would sell the ice cone, ice, the snow cones to the children. But the ice cream man in the ice cream truck, it still comes through my neighborhood now. And they have music that they play. Uh, and everybody will run ice cream. <laughs> you run outside and you would get a cold snack on a hot summer day. And back when I was a child, we would all sit outside uh, on the sidewalk. We would take a break from playing 
in the yard or playing basketball or sometimes we played stickball or baseball and you would see all the kids sitting down on the uh, concrete eating their ice cream. Whereas now if the ice cream man comes, you see kids, they run outside and they go sit in the garage or they go back inside and play a video game. But we would be outside with the ice cream man. And uh, then you would hear your mother yell, pick up the trash, <laughs> a phrasal verb like we just learned, pick up or pick up the trash. And so we would clean up and go back to playing. Now, the convenience store, the convenience store is a place where you would go to get basically snacks because uh, that's how they make their money. So here in the United States, you have stores that are called like Dollar General. Dollar Tree. Uh, we usually call them like 99 cent stores. OK, you may have heard of Walmart. But a convenience store is a small, basically like a small Walmart, and they have basic necessities like toilet paper, toothbrush, things of that nature, mouthwash, deodorant, pet food. But the rest of the store is snack food, potato chips, popcorn. Uh, uh, granola bars, all kinds of candy, sugary drinks, <laughs> iced tea. And you can go in there and just get all the snacks you need and come back home. OK, so it doesn't matter if you're in a rural area or in the city. Convenience stores are very popular in this country and they make a lot of money. And of course, in my opinion, they contribute to a lot of unhealthy eating because there's nothing in there healthy. Actually, now in many convenience stores, they're starting to put things like fruit, uh, things basically like that little lemons and, and, and pineapples and things of that nature already cut up uh, to try to offset some of the sugar that they're selling. But most of the time, convenience stores are stores that sell a whole bunch of snacks. Shopping basket. So when you go into the convenience store to get your snacks, <laughs> it's so funny. You see people, uh, even myself, have potato chips, peanuts, all this stuff just hanging out of the shopping basket uh, when you go get your snacks. And so you want to get in, get out, so you can get back home and watch television or Watch YouTube and watch Jay's Learning School. <laughs> OK, so you would get a shopping basket to put all of your snacks in and then go to the cash register to pay for it. A goodie bag. Now, when it comes to snacks, one thing grownups and kids love to see are goodie bags, because usually goodie bags have a whole bunch of uh, snacks in them. So a goodie bag is usually a paper bag and it's and it's filled with candy and people give them out at parties. They give them out at showers when a when a woman or a couple is having a baby. And so they'll have goodie bags for the guest. Sometimes people give out goodie bags at wedding uh, ceremonies or the reception to show thanks for coming to the ceremony. Uh, you have goodie bags they give out at school during different holidays, such as Christmas, you know, Christmas goodie bag, a Halloween goodie bag, uh, Valentine's Day just passed. And so you have a lot of people that had like a Valentine's candy inside of their goodie bag. And if they don't put it in a paper bag, they'll get a little sandwich bag, put the snacks in there and then tie it in a knot and hand it out a goodie bag. OK. A concession stand. Is a place where you go to get some snacks. So if you go to the fair and a fair is basically uh, how can I describe a fair? It's like a carnival that goes from city to city and they have rides and a whole bunch of con concession stands so you can buy funnel cake, candy apples, cookies, churros. <laughs> nachos and cheese. And so there's just a lot of different uh, snacks that are at a concession stand. OK, now concession stands are also at soccer arenas, football arenas, basketball arenas, 
at the baseball game. They all have a concession stand because they know while people people are there for two to three hours, they want some snacks. And that's a way to generate revenue or make extra money. When I would go see my kids play basketball uh, during the fall, they would have a concession stand. And every time I would go see them play, I would get a bag of popcorn, a dollar for a bag of popcorn. So that's one of my favorite snacks. I love or enjoy eating buttered popcorn. All right. Here's our first quiz for today for today's lesson in our first section. Let's see if you're paying attention. What do kids call the woman in a neighborhood that sells snacks from her home or apartment? What do kids call the woman in a neighborhood that sells snacks from her home or her apartment? So if you are listening, I want you to put your answer down in the comment section. Let's go on to the next part of today's class. Snack time. <laughs> snack time. OK, so snack time is basically a break. Usually you'll see snack time at places like a nursery, a daycare. And so in order to keep the kids awake, alert, active or to give them a time of refreshing, they will have snack time. OK, if you go to a symphony or a play or some type of recital that lasts an hour or two hours, they will have an intermission. And during the intermission, that's basically snack time. <laughs> when you go to a basketball game, football game, uh, they'll have halftime. OK, so halftime usually lasts anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. And basically, guess what that is? Snack time. <laughs> It's time to go get some nachos. It's time to go get some popcorn or pizza. And it's amazing when you go to professional games now. If you're in another country and you have a football team or a soccer team, how much are snacks at the concession stand? Wow, here in the United States, a, ba a bag of popcorn and a drink is almost $15. <laughs> That's crazy. Fifteen dollars. A bottle of water is ten dollars. It's like eight to ten dollars for a bottle of water. And so usually I'll have snack time before I go to game time so I don't spend all my money. But uh, snack time. Junk food. <laughs> junk food tastes so good, but it's just not good for you. You know, junk food uh, is, is pretty much artificial food with artificial flavors. Uh, that are very appealing to the taste buds. But normally, most junk food is not good for you. Uh, French fries, uh, pickles. There's some people that eat pickled eggs, like my wife. Oh, smells like vinegar. <laughs> but yeah, junk food is just basically another name for a snack. It's really not healthy. It may fill you up for 10 or 15 minutes and then you have to go right back and eat it again. Junk food. And, and another thing about junk food, it's cheap. OK, it's not expensive because it's man made. You know, real food uh, is going to cost you some money. But junk food. I mean, think about it when you go to uh, I don't eat at McDonald's or Burger King or, or Wendy's. Those are fast food restaurants here in the United States, if you're from another country. And how in the world can they sell two hamburgers for a dollar <laughs> or two dollars? That's not real meat, in my opinion. Or when you go to a, a taco stand like Taco Bell, a taco shop, and they have uh, junk food, basically, it's just not real food. But again, it tastes good. <laughs> it tastes real good. OK, a health nut. So a health nut is a person who refuses to eat junk food. OK, if they have snacks or they eat snacks, they're going to be healthy snacks. They're going to be the type of snacks that will give them energy, protein, 
Uh, they, they will have fiber in them. OK, you would consider a person like that to be a health nut. They are very conscious of what they put in their body. OK, so instead of eating potato chips, they may eat dried banana chips. <laughs> and I like dried banana chips. OK, instead of eating uh, a Snickers bar, they may eat an apple or they may eat dried apricots. OK. Or, or they may eat a um, raisins that are covered with chocolate. OK, so they get a little sweet and the bitter at the same time. So a health nut, again, is a person who only eats snacks that are good for them. OK, trail mix that will have like nuts, raisins and other type fruits in them. Cashews, uh, walnuts, peanuts. Uh, things of that nature. A snack run. Now, a snack run is when you send someone or you go yourself just to get some snacks and come back home. So if you're watching Jay's Learning School and you pause the video and you make a snack run, you'll run downstairs, get some chips and come back and press play. Okay. Or you'll leave the house and say, I'm going to the store on a snack run. Do you want me to bring you anything back? That's a snack run. All right. So if you're about to watch a movie or as we say, Netflix and chill before we start the movie, I need to make a snack run. Maybe I'm going into the kitchen to get some snacks. I'm making a snack run. What do you want me to bring? She may say, bring me something to drink and some popcorn. All right. A snack run. Now, a snack stash or hiding spots is where you gather your snacks together <laughs> and you put them somewhere where people can't find them. OK, you got a stash. OK, you got a little treasure chest full of snacks that you don't want anyone to find because you're greedy and you want to keep the snacks to yourself. <laughs> you got hiding spots. And if you have children, children can be like mice. They can be like roaches. They're going to find or at least try to find your snack stash or your hiding spots. For years, I had to hide my snacks from my sons, especially when they were playing sports and they just were very active and eating a lot. They would come home and find my snacks and, and, and eat them and then and then when I wanted some snacks, there was none left. Even now, uh, they're grown. I still am in the habit of hiding my cookies <laughs> because I feel like somebody's going to come and get them. I even hide my snacks from my wife. I ain't going to tell you no lie. I hide my snacks from my wife. I got a little snack stash or hiding places. Uh, it's so funny because they'll know where some of my stashes are and they'll come and uh, they'll check to see what I have. Now, I'll tell you this quick story that was pretty funny. When my son was younger, one of my sons was younger. They got a goodie bag from someone at uh, at church. And I mean, it was a great goodie bag. And so they gave it to him. And so what he did, he came home and put a note on it. Daddy, do not touch. <laughs> I took a picture of it and I have it somewhere around the house, but that was his stash. And he knew that daddy would come in the room and take some of his snacks. Isn't that some? I would take his snacks. I sure would. Sugar free, sugar free snacks. Now, I understand why they make them, but I don't know why they make them. Because if I'm going to get a snack, I want the sugar in it. <laughs> but I understand some people it may be health related why they don't have or need the sugar in it. They still like the snack, but they don't want all of the sugar. Me, when I go buy snacks, if it says sugar free, I leave it. Matter of fact, they make some of the packaging look so similar. I have made the mistake of buying sugar free and didn't realize it until I got home. Oh, I was so upset. It's just like buying sugar-free ice cream. I'm like, what am I going to do with this? <laughs> what Really? <laughs> I bought the ice cream for the sugar, okay? 
and you have fat-free snacks, okay? Again, I understand why they make fat-free snacks. Some people are trying to watch their weight or so forth, but I'm thin and I'm, I've been thin all my life. And so if I'm going to eat snacks, I want the fat and the sugar in the snack. So that's just me. I don't know how you feel about it, but I do not want fat-free Cool Whip. I want fat included. <laughs> All right. Non-GMO. Now, this is something that has become very popular in the last few years, especially with food and especially or particularly with snacks. Uh, Non-GMO. I believe GMO stands for growth. Um, let me see. What does GMO stand for? I looked it up. Growth something. Genetically modified organisms. Okay, that's what it means. So basically, it's man-made. Okay, it's got something in there that's not organic. Okay, so uh, it's lab-made when something has GMO in it. That's, I believe, the simplest terms. And if I'm incorrect, you guys can correct me down in the comments section. But now you see a lot of snack food. It will say on a label non-GMO. And that lets people know that it's not uh, genetically modified in any way. And I think that's a great thing. Then you have some snacks that are organic, OK, that are all natural. And I must say, nowadays, many organic snacks actually taste pretty good and they're good for you. So I like some organic snaps. Uh, snacks, uh, ginger chews. I like those. Uh, I've had organic uh, chips. Some of them I do like. And so organic simply means it's natural or most of it is natural. Okay. But they're, they're more health oriented than just regular snacks. Okay. Here's our next pop quiz question. We got a lot we've been doing today. What do you call a person that does not eat unhealthy snacks? Do you remember? Were you paying attention? What do you call a person that does not eat unhealthy snacks? Leave your answer down in the comments section. Okay, a juicer. So a juicer is a great tool if you like snacks because you can take fruit and some vegetables and you can squeeze the ju juice out of it. And so you get all of the protein and nourishment out of the fruit or the vegetable and then you drink it. And I'm telling you, those are pretty it's pretty good. It's really, really good. We have um, it's not actually a no, I do have a juicer. I do have a juicer. I take that back. But uh, we like to do here at the house, we make spinach. We we'll, I guess you could say juice the spinach, but we've done apples. We, we do or done oranges, kiwi, just a number of things and then drink it. And it's good for your skin, depending on what you're juicing is good for your blood, clean your liver out. So I like juicers. They can be expensive, but they do have some that are uh, have a good nominal base price on some of these juicers. So I do like a juicer and it, and it helps replace eating those fatty snacks that we like to eat from time to time. A smoothie. I knew this one was next. That's why I tried not to say it with the juicer, but that's what we do. We, we use our juicer to make smoothies. Okay. We do the spinach. Uh, we put ginger. Uh, one of my subscribers is studying to be a herbalist. And so, yeah, we do we do um, smoothies often. We used to do carrots. We usually do carrots in the summertime, um, but we've done kale, but spinach and we put protein in it. Bananas. Uh, when watermelon is in season, we do berries. I love smoothies. They're filling. And I find myself not eating a lot of snacks when I do prepare smoothies for me and my wife. So I think that's really, really cool. Trail mix is something I mentioned earlier. Nuts, raisins, dates. 
uh, a little bit of chocolate, sometimes dried berries in there. Only thing about trail mix, I'm not a fan of cashews, but pretty much every other nut uh, I do like. Now, after you eat your snacks, and this will be our last one. After you eat your snacks, it is imperative that you floss your teeth. <laughs> Okay, the dentist will tell you, hey, you got a cavity because you've been eating a lot of snacks and it's a lot of uh, plaque back in there that you need to clean out. So I've gotten in the habit of making sure that after I eat my snacks, I floss my teeth and I try to uh, advise my my sons and my wife. We both do it to try to keep those teeth clean, get those chips and those popcorn kernels out of your gums and. Just floss your teeth, keep your mouth clean, and your breath smelling fresh. Oh, wow. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's lesson. All right. Here's our last pop quiz question. What do you call a snack that is all natural? What do you call a snack that is all natural? Were you paying attention? Can you get all four pop quiz questions correct? Leave them down in the comments section and let's find out. I will say this. Well, I'll say it in a moment. Let's give a subscriber shout out before we conclude today's class. Uh, first and foremost, thank you so much for all of the new subscribers. Just want to highlight two that just recently subscribed. I don't want to mispronounce the first name, so I'll just say Santos Lima and Ananias Marcos. Please forgive me if I mispronounce your name. Uh, but I am so grateful that you have subscribed to Jay's Learning School. And I hope that I hear from you in the comment sections and that you are actively uh, speaking and meeting new people that are here on the channel. So thank you to all the new subscribers. I hope you have enjoyed today's class. Now, before we leave, let's get another quiz. Now, this is a quick question. Uh, it's a little unique. It's not an English question, but it is related to snacks. But let's see if you can get this correct. What president or what snack did former U.S. President George Bush choke on while watching a football game in 2002? Now, this is a good one. What snack did former U.S. President George Bush choke on while watching a football game in 2002? Was it peanuts, pretzels, popcorn, or potato chips? Leave your answer in the comments section and let's see if you can get that correct. So ask me anything. Question today is, for me, what is your favorite leisure activity? I have a number of favorite leisure activities, but one I enjoy is fishing. Can you believe that? I enjoy fishing. Yeah, I like going out to the lake and uh, catching bass. Now, I have been deep sea fishing, but I get seasick pretty often, <laughs> or shall I say pretty easy. So I don't prefer going um, deep sea fishing. If I can stay on the bank or on a pier, I'm straight. <laughs> I'm good. But that's one of my leisure activities that I enjoy. If you have a question for me, you can ask me. Make sure it's clean, though. Leave it down in the comments section. And again, thank you so much for spending time in today's live stream. I had a wonderful time. If you were helped by this video, share it with a friend. Make sure that you go back and watch it again to familiarize yourself with many of the common English vocabulary words that I used in today's lesson. All right. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend and join me on my next English live stream class right here on Jay's Learning School.